Welcome to Native Engineering. Today we are doing an exercise based on our previous lesson which was Dynamics, Engineering Science and 4. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise I've taken from a question paper that was written on the 3rd of April 2019. It's question number 4 and it reads as follows. A motor car of 1200 kg is at rest at the top of a 15 meters frictionless slope of 28 degrees to the to the ground when the bricks of the motor car are loosened it slides on its own down the hill to the bottom and immediately moves onto horizon onto the horizontal road on its own until it comes to rest after 20 meters and then we are given the questions. First question, they say, determine the potential energy of the motor car at the top of the slope. Second question, they say, determine the velocity of the motor car after it has moved 8 meters down the slope. Use the application of the conservation of energy for this calculation. And then the third question, they say, determine the deceleration of the motor car on the horizontal road. The last question, they say, Determine the kinetic energy after moving 20 meters on the horizontal road. So this is the information that we are given. We are given the mass of the vehicle. We are given the distance from the bottom of the slope to the top where our object is resting. And we are given the distance that the object will move when it reaches the horizontal road. And we are also given this the angle of the slope and we are told that this is a frictional frictionless slope meaning that our frictional force is zero newtons and then we go to the first question the first question they say determine the potential energy of the motor car at the top of the slope this is the top we know that it's 4.1 we know that potential energy is given by mg h we have the mass we have gravitational acceleration but we do not have the height so first we must calculate for the height we are going to use sine since we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypo hypotenuse which will be sine 28 that's the angle uh, opposite is h and our height is 15 h is equals to seven zero four two meters and then from here we come to this equation and say our mass is 1200 our gravitational acceleration is 9.8 and our height is 7.042 which would give us a potential energy of 82,813.92 joules this is the potential energy of the object as it is resting let's say this is point A we go to the second question they say determine the velocity of the motor car after it has moved 8 meters down the slope use the application of the conservation of energy for this calculation now we know that decrease in h will mean decrease in potential energy if now let's say we are having a height of seven and we decrease this height to six there will be a loss in potential energy now another thing that we know is that increase in velocity is equals to increase in kinetic energy our object is at the top now we are asked to calculate the velocity of the of the object after it has moved eight meters from the top and let's say it's in this position we'll say it's point b now we can tell that 
At point B, two things happened. First, since the object was here, the first thing that happened is that we had increase decrease in height, meaning decrease in potential energy. Another thing that another thing that happened here is that we had increase in velocity, which is equals to increase in kinetic energy. According to the law of conservation of energy, we know that EP loss is equals to EK gain. The potential energy that was lost by the object from point A to point B, it's equals to the kinetic energy that was gained by the same object, since they have the same mass, from point A to point B. Now, from EK, we know we do have the velocity. So now, if we can get the potential energy that was lost, automatically we will have the kinetic energy that was gained. And then from there, we will come to this equation, we will get the velocity of the object at point B. So our first step is to get the potential energy at point B. And we will say potential energy is 4.2. It's equals to mg h. We have mass, we have gravitational acceleration, we do not have height. We calculate for height. Because now we know that there will be a distance of me 7 meters that is remaining for the object to travel till before it reached this point. We will take out this triangle. It's 28. It's 7 meters. And then we have H. Let's say is D. And then now we're using sine theta. It says sine 28. It's equals to sine is opposite, which is D, our distance, uh, over the hypotenuse, which will be fifth at seven. We're using this triangle, seven. And our D will be 3.286 meters. Now we come to this equation. Mg. EP it's equals to 1200 times 9.8 times the distance the height sorry which is 3.286 and we get our answer as three eight six four three point three six joules now for us to get the EP loss EP loss, we will have to minus this value from the original potential energy when our object was at point A. So we will say the potential energy of the, of the object when it was in point A, which is 82,813.92, minus the potential energy of the object when it is in point B, which will be... 38,643 yes 43.36 and we get that our loss in potential energy is 44 44,770 44,770.56 joules we know E loss, EP loss, is equal to EK gained. Therefore, we can conclude to say EK is equal to 44170.56 joules. We know this is the formula of the, kin the kinetic energy. This is the kinetic energy of the value when it is at point B. Now we'll say the kinetic energy, which is given by half mv squared, we will say we just substitute 
seven zero point five six it's equals to half m which is one thousand two hundred times v squared and our v it's equals to eight point five eight meters per second and this is what they have asked us to calculate when they say use the application of conservation of energy for this calculation this is what they are referring to energy cannot be destroyed nor can it be created it, but it can only be transferred from one state to another which is from potential energy to kinetic energy and then we go to the third question they say determine the deceleration of the motor car on the horizontal road now we have to get the kind of the kinetic energy of the force as it is at let's say this is point c which is the bottom of the slope still we are using the same formula ep loss It's equal to EK gain. Or you can say EP at the top is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. We already calculated the potential energy at the top, which is 82,000. 82, Therefore, EK at the bottom. It's equal to 82,813.92 joules. The reason why we are calculating the, for the kinetic energy is because we want to have to get the velocity of the object from point C. When it's at point C, now we go to EK half m v squared. Our EK will be 82,813.92 at the cost to half times M, which is 1,200 V squared. Our V, which will be the initial velocity, it's equal to 11.748 meters per second. We can erase this now. Now we have this as our initial velocity and we have zero meters per second as our final velocity. From here, from this point to this point, because they said they want the deceleration of the motor car on the horizontal road, we know there is no force applied to the, to the car. So after 20 meters, the car will come to rest, which will be U here and V here. V is zero meters per second. We, U, we already have, and we also have the distance which is 20 meters so now having this information we look for a formula that we can use to get our accelerate our deceleration and the formula that i got is acceler deceleration is equal to v squared minus u squared two times the distance and then we put the values final is zero squared Minus initial, it's 11.748 squared. Two times the distance, which is 20. And I got that my deceleration is negative 3.45 meters per second squared. The negative sign is to show that we are decelerating. And then we go to the fourth question. They say, Determine the kinetic energy after moving after moving 20 meters on the horizontal road. That is 4.4. Ek is equal to half mv squared. Half. What's the mass? 1,200. What is the velocity? At let's say this is z. At point z is zero. Therefore, we we'll say zero squared, which will give us zero joules the object is no longer moving at this position therefore it will possess no velocity and since kinetic energy is the 
Ener is the energy a body possesses due to uh, velocity, then our kinetic energy will be zero. So that's basically the end of our question and it is basically the end of our lesson. I will see you on the next lesson.